Welcome to worship this day on this Palm Sunday. I'm Pastor Michelle Miller, and with me today is our liturgist, Peggy Henry. In this time of contrasts with the coming of spring and the cruelty of war, we gather in Jesus' name to connect with our calling and our hope. Let us be in a spirit of worship. Hosanna, praise the prophet Jesus who rides not a war horse, but a cult of peace. Praise to our teacher who comes our way with the gospel of solidarity. Hosanna. Save us from the ways of destruction, living Christ. Save our spirits from being sunk by war, loss, and evil. Hosanna. Praise the holy who comes in the name of righteous peace. Praise the holy who comes in the name of radical love. Hosanna, Hosanna, we pray. Like our ancestors who cried out together in memory of your great works, we proclaim our trust in you. We long for deliverance from all that destroys life. We are desperate for an end to the greed that strips our communities of well-being. We know the kingdom is near. Let it come and let the needs of all your people be satisfied. Amen. The Gospel today is taken from Luke, chapter 19, verses 28 through 40. After Jesus said this, he continued on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As Jesus came to Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he gave two disciples a task. He said, go into the village over there. When you enter it, you will find tied up there a colt that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you untying it, just say, its its master needs it. Those who had been sent found it exactly as he had said. As they were untying the colt, his owners said to them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, its master needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their clothes on the colt, and lifted Jesus onto it. As Jesus rode along, they spread their clothes on the road. As Jesus approached the road leading down from the Mount of Olives, the whole throng of his disciples began rejoicing. They praised God with a loud voice because of all the mighty things he had seen. They said, Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heavens. Some of the Pharisees from the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, scold your disciples. Tell them to stop. He answered, I tell you, If they were silent, the stones would shout. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hosanna, the cry of Palm Sunday. The salvation of God is on the way. Jesus, who comes with a message and a call entirely different from the oppressive enslaving empire that requires obedience, holds power through wealth, suppresses people's voices and livings, treats people and creatures like expendable objects. Jesus' coming meant, and still proclaims, hope is here. And that hope looks like creating deep, trusting, mutual relationships with people, opening possibilities for good, abundant life, especially for those who have been kept down for so long. Liberation. The hope springs from Jesus' life and witness. Followers of Jesus practiced sharing what they had, speaking against oppression by overtly practicing mercy, love, justice, generosity, valuing of people and creatures, acts of inclusion, of healing. Even if those gathered to meet Jesus as he entered the city from the back, hadn't heard the stories about him. The energy in the air was palpable. People were coming alive to a sense of what could be, that things could be different. 
As the Reverend M. Barclay writes, they could taste the spiritual, material, political, relational liberation they longed for. Hosanna, they cried. A new world is possible. And the new world and the Messiah bringing it to be both are far different from what some might have expected. David Bard, our former district superintendent, who is now our bishop yet again, tells about something that happened as he started one of his very first appointments to serve the church up in Roseau. He heard from the church that the youth were going to think he was so cool. He asked why. Because they had heard he drove a vet. And they thought a Corvette, but they had misheard. David drove a Chevette. The Chevette was the lowliest and cheapest of Chevrolets. Not so cool. I guess what we drive or what we ride reflects something about what we are about. So Jesus planned to enter Jerusalem on a colt, a horse so young it has not even been ridden yet, a humble creature. Jesus might even look ridiculous riding it, half grown and untrained as the colt is. What's more, it's not even a colt he owns, it's borrowed, and he has promised to return it immediately, like not just a Chevette, but a borrowed Chevette. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on an unimpressive mount on purpose. Once we have come to understand Jesus' mission as a being about resistance to systems of domination, to show that the way God's kingdom is instead about mercy and hope for all, we see that Jesus' entry into Jerusalem was in fact a demonstration, or perhaps more accurately, a counter-demonstration. I heard this idea first from John Dominic Crossan, and when he explained it, it made perfect sense. It comports with what Jesus has been teaching all along. Violence and oppression are not the answer. The Messiah's power against evil and death is in peace and mercy, not in oppression and violence. Surprising Messiah. Some background reminders. Jesus is entering Jerusalem at Passover. This is the most important time for the Jews when they remembered God freeing them from slavery in Egypt. It was a time of pilgrimage when many, many Jews would come to Jerusalem and the population would about quadruple. And political tensions were high. And you can imagine with all the Jews gathering in Jerusalem to celebrate a holiday where they remember God freeing the people from the oppression of an empire and slavery. That the Romans, the new empire who occupy the Jewish homeland now, including the holy city of Jerusalem, and aware of the restlessness of the people, are going to be making a special security effort. And that is what happened each year. A couple of days before Passover, Pilate and the Romans would stage a parade, entering the city with a show of force. They would ride in on war horses in full dress uniforms, make a show of their power to defuse any uprisings before they could begin. Those that gathered to view the parade to welcome Pilate and his troops were the ones with something at stake, power and privilege. Roman occupation was to their benefit. And on the other side of the city this year were gathered the poor and the marginalized. This year, there was hope. They didn't know what, but Jesus was coming, they knew. And word was, he was the Messiah. Now, Jesus has been teaching all along the way of peace, has been showing the power and vulnerability, has taught his disciples that power is not to be grasped, that the true power of God is not power over, but power with. The Messiah comes not with violent power, but bringing peace. And we are about to witness God being vulnerable. While humankind is being cruel, grabbing power out of their fear, swept along the path of least resistance into violence and evil, Jesus comes doing acts of mercy, based on God's idea of justice. 
It is in direct opposition to the Romans' show of power on that day before Passover that Jesus, with his followers helping, planned a very different, nonviolent entry into Jerusalem from the other side of the city. He trusts that all of them know the book of Ze Zechariah, how it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Hosanna, they shout with gladness, greeting the one who comes holding hope of liberation. Salvation was on the way. Hosanna, save us, save us now. Now, on this Palm Sunday, we stand on the brink of remembering all the events that we mark in Holy Week and all the feelings they may call up in us. And we see in the war in Ukraine how the destruction and violence and death dealing of empire then and now are real. And now, as then, love may look weak and foolish, but by faith and experience, we know that even the smallest acts of love and justice have great power. The new world is possible, and Jesus did and does come. Jesus did and does triumph over the power of evil, injustice, oppression, and violence, and death. Love wins. As Jesus' followers now, we are the ones to know and to proclaim the salvation of God is on the way. Hope is here. Lest we fear this is too tall an order in the face of power and pressure, the power of oppression that we see right now. Take heart. The heart of our faith. Those systems of domination are strong and cause much suffering. The economy of love is stronger. Your smallest acts of mercy and justice matter. They matter a great deal. As followers of Jesus, we too are called to have the courage to face evil with his help. As nonviolent creative activists working to end oppression, we too are called to acts of healing and mercy, of love and justice. We too are called to remind ourselves and others that God in Jesus has made the new world possible, that oppressive systems can be countered, that we can risk looking foolish or weak. We can risk others assuming our task is hopeless because we can be certain that we are in on the kingdom project that Jesus calls us and leads us in. So we can ride our borrowed colts, whatever they may be, trusting that Jesus rides with us, ride on humbly, knowing that the God of love and justice lives and lives in and through you as you go. Amen. stories of Jesus I long to hear things I would ask him to tell me if he were here scenes by the wayside tales of the sea stories of Jesus tell them to the children stood round his knee and I shall fancy his blessing resting on me words full of kindness deeds full of grace all in the love light of Jesus' face Into the city I'd follow the Jesus man, waving the branch of the palm tree high in my hand. One of his heralds, yes, I would sing, loudest Jesus is King.
Let us be in a spirit of prayer. We face evil, O oh God, and we know it. Like Jesus so many years ago, we face evils which diminish and demean the gift of life that you have given all creation. Like war in Ukraine, we name the places of struggle against evil in our hearts. It's Palm Sunday, O oh God, and we gather as hopeful people. Help us to follow Jesus who dared to battle evil, not with weapons, but with the gifts of mercy, humility, and compassion. Help us to realize these gifts in our own lives, this day and every day, as we participate in the daily prayer of Jesus, saying, Our Father, Father Mother, Mother, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Go forth in good company, for even the stones cry out of God's saving love. Fields sing of flowering justice. Oceans roar against the oppressive systems. Cityscapes celebrate holy interdependence. Trees rejoice for all that is springing into life. Christ is all around us and within us, that we might co-create the kingdom of life. <laughs> 